All right, now I will be giving the 1AR. The order is the cybersecurity advantage, solvency, and then the terrorism disadvantage. Because I'm affirmative, I'm putting my case first in my order rather than terrorism because I want to prove that my case is a good idea before I go on to respond to the negative off-case arguments. And this should be true in every affirmative speech. All right, this is also a five-minute speech, which means I've got a lot to cover. So let's see if I can do it. All right, let's begin. Our nation is vulnerable right now to a cyber attack because of the surveillance the NSA has been doing. The negative has conceded both of our specific impact scenarios. First, the nuclear meltdowns argument. They have conceded that in a world where a cyber attack were successfully carried out and the grid were shut down, nuclear meltdowns would cascade across the United States and that radiation would poison thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of homes. Second is the military argument. The military is very vulnerable to a cyber attack on the grid. Our backup generators are not as good as they should be, which means that we could lose military readiness very quickly in the event of this happening. This outweighs on magnitude. Our impacts affect far more people. They are countrywide, potentially have global implications in terms of our military readiness. Uh, and also, then secondly, this turns the disadvantage because in a world where our military was shut down and scrambling in the United States to even function and turn on the lights, they could not effectively respond to terrorist attacks both in the U.S. and abroad. For now, on the case proper, they say that a golden key would solve, but a golden key just doesn't work. There are, you should prefer our experts on this, Dr. Toro and Jeller. Both of them have actual cryptography experience. They're citing people uh, from like random bloggers in the Washington Post. None of these people know anything about technology. They're simply saying, well, Google is so great at all the other things Google does. Maybe they could magically figure this out. That, does, that is, does not constitute an argument for how this technically works. And until the negative actually gives you that explanation, you should not evaluate this argument for them. Some things actually are technically impossible, like time travel. Just because we figured out the internet does not mean we will figure out every possible thing. And as far as I'm concerned, encryption backdoors that only law enforcement can access fall into that category. Next, they say there's no impact of cyber attacks and that the grid wouldn't actually shut down. You can group these two arguments. They are just wrong. Our evidence cites the FBI, FBI director, James Comey who actually is a very qualified source because he knows the most about these threats. He controls the biggest agency in the country that actually looks into things like cyber threats and has the most data. The other people they're citing can only look at a tiny portion of that. He actually has access to things that aren't public, which means you should prefer him. He doesn't have an extra incentive to get more resources to his agency. He's just supposed, he would just get fired if he made up things. He's just trying to protect our country. That's our Berg, Daly, and Tilford evidence. And just because a lot, well, a lot of their evidence relies on the premise that just because something hasn't happened before uh, means it won't happen again. But that's not true. It won't happen in the future. But that's just not true. Pearl Harbor did happen despite a Pearl Harbor not happening before that. We should be vigilant about cyber threats. Technology is increasing every day. And there are other evidences just talking about why terrorists wouldn't attack. But this ignores state actors that have an incentive to do cyber conflict like North Korea or Iran. Now on to solvency. They only make a brief argument here about how our plan will get circumvented, but they provide no explanation for how that would occur or why. We put make it illegal for the NSA to place backdoors into these companies' encryption. There's no committee, there's no court that can get gerrymandered, there's no legal argument that gets around it. We get to fee out the plan passes. They have provided no specific explanation for why it would not work. Now the terrorism disadvantage. You can group the impact calculus. I actually answered this on the other page on the cybersecurity advantage with my own impact help. But they do say that the plan gets rolled back. Again, that can't happen. The affirmative gets durable fiat, which means not only do we get to say the plan passes, but that it passes indefinitely. Otherwise, the negative would always win because they'll just win that the next Congress would roll it back because obviously all the things we're debating about are not things that actually get passed in Congress. Now, one thing you should ask yourself on this terrorism argument is when has NSA surveillance actually stopped an attack, a specific attack, not just the laundry list of examples and numbers they gave you, but a specific scenario? And how did that actually work? Our evidence indicates the vast majority of terrorist attacks are stopped through traditional investigative methods, not through mass surveillance. You can extend our data overload term here. That's the Schneier evidence. The when we do mass surveillance and the kind that the negative advocates for, we just get too many false leads. We have too much data and we can't figure out who the actual terrorists are. When you're looking for a needle in the haystack, the last thing you want to do is pile on more hay onto that, uh, onto that pile. Last, their 
there is no impact to, or the impact of terrorist attacks is relatively small. As you can see, all the examples they gave you were things that happened outside the United States and Europe, which is a lot closer in proximity to the ISIS conflict. There's no reason to think that mass mass scale terrorist attacks are going to happen here, especially of the nuclear kind. How would terrorists get weapons of mass destruction into the United States? How would they have the scientific expertise to actually detonate them? It takes decades for even states to develop things like this. There's no reason a state would give a terrorist a nuclear weapon or that they'd be able to use it. That's our Mearsheimer evidence.